Hi friend, thank you so much for joining me. In this particular video, we will be painting a sky. Cause you know, I am the sky queen. So I'm just gonna be showing you my way of painting with acrylics. If this video doesn't work for you, please feel free to keep going and find something that does work for you. I am just teaching you in this video how to paint with acrylics in the way that I have learned. So if this works for you, please make sure to hit that subscribe button to stay updated with future posts. I will be posting my reference photo right here. Go ahead and screenshot if you want. Okay, let's get to the blending of our paints and then we can proceed with the painting. For today's painting, we are using the paints listed up above. You have ultramarine blue, primary magenta, CP, cadmium yellow medium, as well as your white and your slow drying medium. You can use any brand of paints you prefer, but these are my favorites. To start off, we are going in with our medium shade of blue where I'm using that ultramarine blue as well as our titanium white. I am mixing that slow drying medium in with the paints to ensure that it gets coated very well so we have a longer working time with the shade. I am also going to be blending in a deeper shade of blue. I'm just picking some of that color we already blended right up and adding a little dab of that ultramarine blue once again to deepen that blue shade that we're working with. Make a nice creamy pink shade. I am going to go in with that primary magenta, add a dab of that cadmium yellow medium as well as some white, mix all of that up to get this very nice creamy pink. Same method we are going to keep using is picking up some of that existing color we already have on the palette and adding more of another color to make a different shade. This helps your painting be very cohesive and that is exactly what you want when you're painting a sunset or a landscape or a sky. You want your piece to be very cohesive. Went ahead and made a deeper magenta just by taking that same shade, adding the remaining paint that was left on our palette knife and adding some white. We just want a nice deeper shade of that baby pink we're working with. Now I am taking some more ultramarine blue and adding a dab of that medium blue shade we had previously made. I also always keep a dab of white on my palette just in case I need to lighten any shades as I go. Now that we have our final shades, we are ready to begin this beautiful painting. We are starting off by applying our medium shade of blue we had made on the palette. I am just gradually placing this paint while picking up some water on the tip of my brush. Please ensure your brush is damp always. Since we are painting a gradient, it is very important that we work on transitional shades so that everything blends seamlessly. I'm just picking up that same medium blue shade we had made and started with and adding a bit of that lighter blue shade we had made. Mixing those together and beginning to apply those right beneath that first shade of blue we had laid down. Again, this is going to make and give you a very nice transitional shade. I'm just going to go ahead and dab this shade of blue blue very lightly once again before picking up our lightest shade of blue and applying that to the canvas the same way. You also want to make sure you are placing your brush strokes in the same direction that way when you go in to blend with your blending brush everything looks very seamless. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is take this orange shade and mix it with some white but i do want to make sure that i remove this blue color completely from my brush so go ahead and soak your brush into water scrub it out like that and eliminate any residue of that paint i'm going in with a tad of this white up here and getting this nice almost very creamy orange hue that we have right here and I'm just gonna place it very lightly right here going in with a little more white to make a creamier shade over here now in this corner of our reference we do have a little bit of a deeper orange peeking through so as you can see I am just creating that orange by blending in some white, picking up more of that orange, more white until I get the desired shade that I want. Now I am going to go ahead and apply that orange right here in this corner since that's where that orange is on our reference. Picking up this deeper magenta shade and laying it all the way down across the canvas just like that. Amplifying it here in this corner like that 
And now I'm going to take a bit of this pink shade that you see right here, just applying it into any open space we have. Also, we could create some clouds if we wanted to. We could just blend some clouds in right here, just like that. Acrylics do tend to dry very quickly, so our next step is to take a fluffy brush. I'm going to be using this brush by BH Cosmetics. It's very fluffy. I am going to lightly tap this into my water. For any blending that you use for all of your brushes, you do want to make sure that they're just being tapped very gently into the water. If this is the surface of the water, you're just going to tap it and not fully submerge. Tap it dry it off on a rag like I have here and then we're going to go ahead and blend. And as you can see that fluffy brush is just really eliminating any brush stroke you had previously seen on the canvas. Make sure that when you're transitioning from two different shades you are wiping off on any rag paper towel you may have to eliminate that leftover pigment you have on your brush so that way it doesn't continue to transfer into the other shades you have. Now I am going to work my way to blend this lighter blue with this orange and this pink shade that I have right here. As you can see, for the entirety of this blending process, I am going in with the same brush stroke, which is just lightly going in circular motions and picking up some of that color to blend with the shade that is on top of it. In order to not get muddy colors, it is very important that every single time you are going to blend a new shade, whether it be a darker hue or a lighter hue, you do want to go ahead and wipe off any excess paint on your rag or your paper towel, whatever you have, so that you can ensure a very smooth transition. Now I am finishing the blend of this paint by just swiping that same blending brush side to side. Then I'm going to go ahead and add more of the same colors that are already on the palette to deepen them on the canvas. Here you can see I am adding more of the same shade that is already on our canvas and then doing the same movement just blending that up with circular brush strokes until you get the desired blend that you want. For me, I really like, especially with gradients, to have a very, very smooth transitional gradient on my canvas before I add any clouds. But if you do like the chunkiness of some of the blend, go ahead and leave that. Whatever works for you is what you wanna go ahead and do. To start adding some clouds to our piece, I am gonna take that deeper magenta shade we have on our palette and add some of that ultramarine deeper blue we also have on the palette and just begin to lightly make sideways brush strokes on your canvas. I am taking a flat, smaller brush to create the illusion of faraway clouds. These should seamlessly be blending into the background as your background should still be wet, but if your background is now dry, you can go ahead and add some water to the tip of your brush, pick up that color, and then go ahead and create that sideways motion on your canvas. To create our horizon line, we are gonna go in with the darkest shade of blue once again, just lightly placing it right at the bottom of your darkest magenta shade you have on your canvas. Once you get that horizon line all the way across the canvas, go ahead and pick up your deepest magenta once again. Leave the remaining residue of the blue paint you picked up to create your horizon line on your brush so that when you pick up your magenta shade, you are already creating a deeper purple on your canvas without needing to blend that shade separately on your palette. Now we are gonna begin creating the illusion of water. I am taking my lightest blue shade with the medium blue shade, blending them in together and just lightly swiping that right across the deep blue horizon line we had already put on our canvas. Going back in with that light orange creamy color we had created, I am just gonna do the same swiping motion right underneath that blue we just laid down. And then I'm also gonna go ahead and add some of that light pink we created right underneath that orange to create a nice opposite gradient. A very big key when painting landscapes that involve water is to make sure you are mirroring the bottom of your quote unquote water part to the sky you have up above. So I'm just going to go in with the same colors that I see on the top of my canvas and replicate them down below. Keep in mind these colors do not need to look exactly like the ones above. It is just placing similar shades on your canvas so that you have the illusion that the water is reflecting the sky up above. 
once all of your shades are placed nicely on your canvas you are going to go ahead and go in with that same fluffy blending brush we had previously used to blend the sky out this time blending downwards in the same circular motion we had previously used once you eliminate all of the previous brush strokes go ahead and do a swiping motion on the canvas just to seal that nice blend we have now to begin creating the illusion of waves you are slowly going to go in with that same movement yet at an angle we had used to paint the faint clouds up above we are just swiping back and forth with that same flat brush and we are angling the water to come towards our left corner so we are just gradually making sure that the brush strokes we are laying down are angled slightly to your left Again, the bottom portion of your painting should still be wet, so when you are applying these very faint lines, they should be blending right into the canvas. Once you have your desired waves, you can begin adding some highlight to them to create an even realer illusion. So here I am just picking up our lightest shade of blue and lightly placing it right in between the lines we had created with that darker shade of blue. As you can see, applying this highlight in between the deeper shades of our painting really makes the water pop, bringing these little painted ripples to life. I am applying the same effect higher on the painting just by using that lighter shade of orange we had previously created. Now for the final step of this piece, I am just taking that white again with some orange to create this very creamy light color to place our moon down. You always want to make sure you save the finishing or final details for last as these can get lost in translation if you apply them too quickly during your painting. So here I am creating the illusion of stars just by lightly dabbing the same shade of white onto the piece and tapping that in with my fingertips. For our final detail, we are going to take that same shade of this creamy white color and create a swiping motion down below to create the illusion of the moon being reflected upon the water. And just like that, you have your first acrylic little landscape painting. I really hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you had an amazing time following along with my first acrylic painting tutorial. If you did, make sure to give this video a thumbs up comment down below if you learned any new techniques anything like that i would also love to see your recreations of this piece that we painted together if you have an instagram please feel free to tag me so i can see the end result that you got because i think she is little but she's a little beauty and i would love to see your interpretation of this tutorial thank you so much for watching this video please make sure to hit that subscribe button down below to stay updated with future posts and i will see you next week Bye.